All right, so we're going to try out using this new system called phantoms. Remember, for some of our hypothesis testing, we're going to use the parameter, then name our hypotheses, then our assumptions, name the test, give the test statistic, obtain a p-value, make a decision, and finally, state our conclusion in context. So for our first one, I have a textbook example here, like literally from the textbook. So in 2000, United Nations claimed there was a higher rate of literacy in men than in women from the country of Qatar. Humanitarian organization went to Qatar, conduct a random sample. The results revealed that 45 out of 234 men and 42 out of 251 women were classified as illiterate on the same measurement test. Do these results indicate the United Nations findings were correct? State, test an appropriate hypothesis, and state your conclusion. So our first thing is, we're going to put down P. Well, define our parameter. So P will be the true proportion difference between male and female literacy rates in percentage points. H, so we are hypotheses. So my null hypothesis is that P male equals P female. And in words, there is no difference in literacy rates. Alternative hypothesis, well, let's see. They claim they have a higher rate of literacy in than women. So I'm going to say male is greater than female. Male literacy is greater than female literacy. And that's our hypotheses. So we're going to go to A, our assumptions. Our assumptions are independence. But to get independence, it's reasonable that a random sample, well, first off, we need a random sample. Conduct a random sample. Random sample stated in intention. I also need to make sure it's reasonable they're independent. Well, they did a random sample, men and women, they're reasonably independent. Each person was independent of the others. So that's reasonable. I need to know, is it large enough? which means I need 10 success and 10 failure. Need 10 success, or more than or equal to 10 success and greater than or equal to 10 failure. Men, well, 45 of them could read. So let's see, we're classified as illiterate. I'm sorry. So the illiteracy rate, oh, illiteracy. Oh, every time. So I need to go back and change all those to illiteracy. So we change those. Male illiteracy is higher than female. So I'm glad I caught that. Okay. So men, I had 45 illiterate. And that means 45 out of 234, the rest of them must have been literate. So 234 minus 45, 189. So that 189 failure as we're defining this. And females, well, they it was 42, 42 illiterate, and it was out of 251, so 251 minus 42, 209. So it is a large enough sample. I've met my assumptions. I can continue with the test and name the test. Well, they tested men. They also tested This one will work with the portion Z test. Now, if I look at my formula card, it gives some information about how I deal with two proportion Z tests. 
And my formula is two samples, difference of samples. Now this is my special case. When P1 equals P2, they're not. So up here, I'm dealing with this. If we remember, I have not eliminated the idea that they're exactly the same. So my P is actually going to be based on if they were the same, I pool my data. I don't have to worry much about that yet, but it's a two prop Z test. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to find my Z score, and my Z score is based on the difference, males minus females, minus my null hypothesis, divided by my standard deviation. My standard deviation is right here, difference of two proportions. So, and then my P male times Q male divided by sample size of male plus P female times Q female over sample size of female. And these notations are clear enough that I don't have to define what they're going to do beyond that. So I've listed my test and I've named my test. Really, I see a name of my test. At this point, I've named my test. Phantoms, I need T. I need my T statistic, my test statistic, which would be a Z score. We're going to get our Z score from our calculator. We need to run our test. So I do stat, test. I have a two prop Z test. If I go in, it wants to know, well, how many of the men failed? Well, it's 45 out of 234. 45 out of 234. Females, it was 42 out of 251. And I want to say P1, my males, is greater than P2. So it actually turns out I'm on the right one. And I've said I'm going to draw it because I'm going to copy this sketch onto my answer. So I draw it. I've got a normal curve. There it is. I sketch my curve. It looks like it's right about here. It's shaded into the right. My Z score, 0.764. My P value is right next to it, 0.236. And that also covered my O, obtain a P score, which we've done. M, I need to make a decision. Well, I use my P value because that's why I obtain it. And this is the probability Z would have been greater than or equal to 0 0.7164 equals 0.2369. Make a decision. Well, due to my high P value, which is greater than any alpha I might use. I fail to reject the null hypothesis. S, stated conclusion in context, I have no notes. Male illiteracy rates in Qatar are higher than women. That's it. Now, find a 95% common cell for the difference. Okay. Well, we kind of use phantom again, except now it's called panic. P, it's the difference between the two grades groups. We're going to use panic. Panic, P, define the parameter. Parameter is the difference in rates. This is going to be P. A, we need to do assumptions. Assumptions met in hypothesis test. N, name the test. I'm going to do a two-proportion Z interval. 
Then I'm actually going to run my interval. Well, call my calculator again. Stat, test, two per Z interval. There it is. And if I go in, all my data has been brought in. I do want a 95% confidence interval, so I'm going to say level 0.95. So I'm going to give my conclusion. I am 25% confident male rates are between 4 percentage points And that's negative, so lower than women. To nine percentage points higher. Actually, nine point three percentage points higher. Period. And that's it. So that's how I use phantom and panic to solve a question of a difference of two proportions, or a two-proportion Z-test and a two-proportion Z-interval. I hope that helped you out.